All right, processing users, welcome to part two of this tutorial. This is about using arrays with images. Okay, so if you want to have a whole bunch of different pictures and say randomly pull from them or display them all out in a certain order, um, using an array is a really good idea. So just to give you a quick idea of the setup here, I just um, have this beginning of a sketch, and this is um, from part one of the tutorial that was using text. I just stripped out some of the stuff from it. I saved it to a new name called Pictures, and then um, inside of that Pictures folder, because remember, whenever you save a processing sketch by a certain name, it's, it creates a new folder for you with that same name um, and puts the processing file inside of it. Now, I also made a new folder inside of it, okay, inside of the Pictures folder, called Data. It's always going to be lowercase d, and it's always going to sit right next to your processing file. Inside of your data folder is where you put your assets or your content. In this case, I put in eight different pictures that I um, downloaded from online. These are by an artist named Ryan Coleman, who does these uh, popular characters from today in the Pac-Man style. It's kind of an interesting thing. Nice work. So um, it's just really important that we have pictures here to reference, to draw from. Um, before we really begin our sketch. So let's go ahead and, and start making images. Now that I know the pictures are in the right spot, inside of the data folder, inside of the same folder where this sketch is located, uh, a quick reminder on how to draw an image. Now, anytime you do an image, we're going to use the data type called P image, capital P, capital I, and we're going to call this whatever we want. I'm going to call it um, P1 for picture one. And you can just put a semicolon there. Now in the void setup, this is where you're actually going to load the picture in. So here we can say p1 equals load image, and this is the built-in term, load image. If there was one thing you were going to look up, you could right click and say, hey, how does load image work? Um, and we're going to put in the name of the file in quote marks. Here it's going to be um, one, or zero dot png. That's just one of the names for the picture. Now that we've done step one and step two, um, the final thing we do to draw the picture is to just say um, the word image. Image will draw an image that you have loaded. And now it wants the name of the P image. In this case, we call the RP image P1. Second thing is the X and Y location of where it gets drawn. Um, mouse X and mouse Y. So it will follow where my mouse is. Now notice I have no background um, set in the void draw. So when I run this, we should be seeing a whole lot of this picture all over the map. Okay, it's just following everywhere my mouse is um, over and over again. If you don't like that, you could always put the background in here. And I'll just draw a white background this time. 255 is white. I need to learn how to spell first. There we go. Rerun the program. And now I don't see those inky trails. Now what, what you may or may not like is uh, it defaults to the top left of the picture being its origin point. If you prefer that it sticks to your mouse, um, anywhere in the void setup you can say image mode and all in caps put center. Now when we run the program, it sticks to where the middle of your mouse is. All right, good. So that's just the way to load in one image, is to go through this technique. Now what also might make sense would be to load in multiple images array that's going to hold all these images. So um, up here, actually let's do it at the bottom here. We can say P image. This is going to be the data type that the array holds. So last time we did this tutorial, it was with strings or pieces of text. They could be numbers. In this case, we're going to do P images or different processing images will be the items in the array. What are we going to do next? We're going to put in the open and close block brackets, these kind of block quotes or brackets. That tells the program that we're talking about an array. And thirdly, what is this called? I'm going to call this pick array equals. Now, when we did text, we assigned this to be um, uh, just the names in text. Here, what I'm going to do is say new p image, open a block quote, and we're going to put in how many pictures we have. Um, I believe I have eight, and that's going to go inside of the quote. I'm sorry, inside of the block quote of these brackets. All right, let's just see if it throws an error. It doesn't, we're still okay. Okay, good. Now we have all these um, P images here, so let's go ahead and, um, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. I think we can actually even say P1, P2, 
P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, and I'll do a P0. So P0 through 7. Um, as long as we don't assign what those, those values are right away, it's happy to um, let us do multiples this way. Okay, good. So we've freed up the memory for 0 through 7. Um, we have a new pick array, which will hold eight different items. And now in the void setup, let's go ahead and populate. Um, well, first we're going to tell the program what 0 through 7 are. So we're going to do those load images. And then stick the um, these p images inside of this p image array. So here we already have the setup here. We already have the um, p1 equals load image part. We're going to just do a lot of copying and pasting because this is... Um, a fairly straightforward thing. So P0, I just changed that from 1 to 0. 0 is load image and then the name. I'm going to drop down and I'm just going to paste this 8 times. Change this from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3, oops, to 4 to 5 to 6, Ooh, looks like I'm short 1, and to 7. And here I will similarly do 1 through 7. Okay, so there we go. Those um, eight images are all loaded. Okay, and so now we want to actually fill this image, um, this image array with these individual p images. So the last step here is we're going to say, remember we always say the name of the array, pick array, zero equals p zero. So even though we freed up the space for the array up here to have eight items, we haven't actually told it what those eight items are here. So um, there we go, and we can just copy and paste this. Now there's a faster way to do this, um, but I want to kind of do this very manually for now, just so if you're kind of unfamiliar with this territory that um, this is the more verbose or drawn out way to do it. I think it just is a little bit easier to see what's happening um, inside the program. The, the faster way, by the way, to do this later is to do this process in a for loop. But um, we'll, we'll keep this nice and easy for now. So uh, we load in the, the eight images, and then we stick those eight images inside of the array for those eight placeholders. Now, do we, uh, we want to see if this works? Well, we called our array pick array. And so before where we were drawing image, this image called P1, let's try drawing the image called pick array. And we'll just choose an item, item number three. Should be the fourth picture. We'll hit the play button and see if we, we see, hey, there's Waldo's head. We we'll change this to a four. Now it's the fourth picture in the array. Um, Star Wars guy, I think. Or maybe Halo guy, I'm not sure. Um, so there we go. It's, it's working. Now what's really nice about this, now that we have this picture array with eight pictures, we can do the same things we did before. So let's go back um, here and we're going to use the same idea of before we had this thing called text holder. This time let's just do, um, actually we won't even do that, do that much. We're just going to have it, um, we're going to take the background out of the void draw and put it up in the void setup. And this time I'm going to change it to black instead of white, so I'll put in the number zero there. And for the image that's being drawn, I'm going to draw that image down in the void mouse pressed. So I'm going to delete that out, put it in the void mouse pressed, and I'm going to do the same randomizing idea here. So um, when we, whenever we click on the mouse, instead of choosing a static number here for which item in the array, I'm going to do the same idea before we as a random pick array dot length and that way if we add more pictures later this code will still work and this will choose a random number between 0 and in this case 8 because that's how many pictures there are and remember we always want to round that thing down to the, the lower integer so now it's going to be between 0 and 7 every time I click on the mouse it'll show up where my mouse um, was located the mouse X and mouse Y position and if, and if you didn't watch the last tutorial and that's confusing, whoa, I forgot to change the, <laughs> the function type. Before we were using void mouse pressed, that'll be a little bit less crazy. So now when I click my mouse, I'm randomly choosing a picture. OK. 
Okay. Or, you know, if we like the crazy one, mouse moved. Now every time I mouse my move or move my mouse, it draws a new picture. It's a lot of little Pac-Man guys. Now a common thing you might want to do would be when you um, click on a mouse button, it wouldn't just draw one, but maybe you'd want a whole series of images to arrange. Um, if you're doing a, a, a generative collage, for example, you could have it draw different parts, um, different images stacked up however you want them. So in this case, when I click on my mouse button, I'd like it to draw not one, but let's say 10 different pictures and spread them out randomly. So if I wanted to do something 10 times, hey, a quick way to do it is in a for loop, right? So for int, this time I'll use a different letter, b equals zero, semicolon, b is less than 10, and however many times you want it to loop is what number you put in there, semicolon, b plus plus. Every time the loop runs, b will grow by one, from zero all the way to nine. Okay, and the thing that happens now is gonna be it draws an image, it randomly chooses it from the pick array, Instead of it drawing it mouse X, mouse Y, let's just say random. And I want it to be randomly between the zero and the far right-hand side of the sketch, which is what's referred to as the width. The width will dynamically find whatever you set the width of your sketch to be. So again, this is a smarter way to do this than put in the number 900, which is what I have my size set to. The reason why it's smarter is later if I decide, ooh, I don't like 900, I want it to be 1200 or 600. This will dynamically change with whatever you have your sketch set to. And I'll do the same thing here, random height. Okay, so just to recap, uh, I click on the mouse button, this function fires off, everything between these two curly brackets happen. A for loop starts up, this letter B goes between um, 0 and 10, or 0 and 9, and then each time through those loops, the 10 iterations that take place, it's going to draw an image uh, and randomly place it anywhere on the screen essentially, anywhere between zero on the width and zero on the height. So let's check it out. Ah, right, I set it to mouse move again. I keep on forgetting to do this, I apologize. Mouse pressed, instead here. I click once, 10 pictures. Click again, 10 pictures again. Now if every time you do this, you prefer it to um, clean out what the last slate did so you get a fresh start, well, right in the void mouse press, you could re re-instantiate that thing called background. Okay, now every time you click on the mouse, this thing says, all right, whoosh, clean black slate, then draw your 10 pictures. All right, let's go ahead and try that. Click, click, click. So if this was a, a photo collage and you had bigger images of, say, landscapes and subject matter, um, every time you click, you get a different picture, which is kind of nice. Um, if you don't like 10, if you'd like to see, hey, what's it look like with 100 items? Boy, that wasn't hard. We'll just add one more zero. We'll rerun that. There it is with 100 pictures. Very nice. Um, it's also really great to note that whenever you draw an image, if you put in just the name of the image and its width, or I'm sorry, the X and Y location, it'll just draw the pixel at whatever resolution it was saved at. If, on the other hand, you want to do some other resolutions, you could put in um, certain numbers here. So if you want to say, hey, I'd like them all to draw at 120 by 120, now they should all be a little bit bigger. Okay. Now this is making the, the images bigger than the original, so it's going to pixelize. The image quality will kind of look lousy. So if anything, it's better to start with an image that's too big and scale it down if you need to, but never have to scale up. Um, one more thing I want to do is, because we can put in this third I'm sorry, this fourth and fifth parameter in the image to not just draw the image at an x, y location, but also draw it at a certain width and height. That means you could randomize the width and height as well. And that's what I want to do here. Random. And I want the width to randomly be between um, 20 pixels to um, 150 pixels. And I want the height to do the same thing, so I can copy that and paste it in there. And you probably can't see it, but it's just the same stuff there. All right, so now when I run this, we're going to get images of varying size. All over the place. You don't like 100? You say, I'm a maniac and I want 1,000. Okay. Knock yourself out. So many images you just can't see anymore. Um, there you go. 
So that's the kind of main idea behind um, loading in P images, essentially reserving the space for them, creating an array that will hold all of them, and then down here, loading the individual files into each of the individual P images, and then loading the P images into each holder of the array. So it may seem a little confusing, but just try it out. Um, once you get this working, it, it, it's really not that bad. And now you have access to a whole bunch of images. And what you do with them, it's, it's completely up to you. Here's just one of many examples for what you can do. All right, processing users, have fun out there. Good luck coding, and, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.